So I don't know if I told you guys about my, my trip to Mammoth. You guys... We I've, saw you there. Yeah, I did do a lot of social media. No, 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 no. Oh, we, we, we saw, saw you, you there. Oh, on right. social yeah. media. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 But because we weren't invited. Well, let me ask you guys a question. <laughs> have either of you guys ever been to Mammoth? I have, but it, it's been... 10, 12 years since I've been up to Mammoth, yeah. but I, I have been up there once before. How about you, bro, man? Come on, bro. What, what's up? What, what, what the hell am I going to do up there? What you mean? You know how many snow bunnies you need to get me up there? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of bunnies. Well, let me tell you something. Mammoth, and I've been, this, is, this past winter, uh, or this past holiday break, was I think my third or fourth time there. And um, I, I remember like the second time I was there going, this place for me is just, it's religious for me. And I mean it like is that. Is that white? Is it? <laughs> is that why? Listen, the thing is, is for me, skiing is a is a really, really big, important thing. My parents put me on skis when I was a little kid and I've been skiing my whole life. And, and even though I grew up in Florida, you know, from the time I was a little kid in New York until we moved to Florida, by the time I'd gotten back on skis, I was shocked that the muscle memory was there from when you were a little kid. So I love skiing and I love to take my kids skiing. And Mammoth, I found Mammoth, like, I, I was always afraid of driving to Mammoth. Oh, six hours, it's too far from San Diego. It's so much easier to go to Big Bear. Well, now they own both. They, they own both Mammoth and Big Bear. And so I'd rather take the extra three-hour drive to get to the world-class skiing of Mammoth, hmm. even though Big Bear is great because it's right in our backyard. But let me just tell you, for me, Mammoth has become this religious place. You know, two years ago, I interviewed Mark Brownlee, who was the CEO back then, who was a guy, amazing guy. The podcast is still available. It went from like this Irish sheep herder guy to running this, this international resort. And I say international. I mean, there's people from all over the world talking all different kinds of languages. You guys say you weren't invited. I'll ask you guys this question. Would you go do three or four days of shows from Mammoth? Uh, can we go right now? You're that enthusiastic about it. I love snowboarding. He's not good at I love snowboarding. No, he's I'm not, not very good at it, but I love snowboarding. And I just love being up uh, in the mountains when it's snowing. I, I like it a lot. I'm sure it'll be an adventure for you if you've never done it. But you're from Chicago. You're good with cold. I'm, it's not the cold that I got a problem with. The ski snow? ain't really for my people. Listen, we're not really the, <laughs> no one's, we're not really the ski. I don't people. think either of us are telling you to get on, the, on, a, on skis. But well, we're listen, telling you, can you go up to the mountain and I'm do a, a show? I'm going to tell you right now, if I go up there, I'm going to turn into like, um, who, they, who the dude in the Olympics who be doing all them tricks? In Sean the White? I'm, I'm Sean Black. So you're not, you're the flying, <laughs> he's the flying tomato. You're the, the flying fly sweet potato. Yeah. <laughs> there Done. you go. Right on. Done. You got Sean White. Now you got Sean Black. Done. You got the flying tomato. You got the flying sweet, sweet potato. potato. Hells yeah. to the, yeah. Done. Uh, and I'll be the flying frijole. There you go. You know, like that? I don't even know what that is. It's a bean. Oh, yeah. there we go. <laughs> right. So I love Mammoth now. I've become like really obsessed with going there. And I can't just go once. And I'm really, really lucky because my new girlfriend, the new Ooh. GF, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. she has got a beautiful house in Mammoth that she and her now ex-husband bought years ago, uh -oh. which is a little kind of weird, right? Like I'm going there and it's like still their house 50-50, only, you know, when it's 50% with her, I'm there, hey, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so uh, let me show you guys some videos, though, from what, what was going on. I, I went to, this was on Tuesday morning. I drove from GF's house over to the main lodge area to pick up, you know, lift tickets and things like that. And on the way back, and I know this is dangerous and people probably are going to criticize me for doing this, but, you know, I'm driving down the road and I'm just looking at this place and I'm going, it is so freaking beautiful here. And the way they've cleared the roads and the amount of snow and it's early in the morning and the blue skies and... I know it's dangerous. I got it, okay? I shouldn't be doing this. No, I get it. you should it. not be doing I this. I get it, okay? I try to lie to everybody and say it's a GoPro camera, but it's not. But I just want I just want you to see how spectacular and how beautiful it is. And I'm kind of giving you my own little personal slideshow here. So, Alex, go ahead, man. Just put pictures up, and I just want to tell everybody what was going on because this is like my own little personal great friend's postcard from, from Mammoth. Uh, Alex, you just put that stuff up on the screen, and I'll just, I'll just talk, it, talk you through it here. But uh, here's the first one. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. Now I've become the guy who, like, everywhere I go with the new GF, we're taking pictures together. Oh, of course. You know? Man. So so there we were up at the top of Mammoth, and, and I had my daughter, my 13-year-old daughter, Julia, and her friend, Hope. And so here they the are. Who's that thing they're with? That's Wooly. Wooly what? Mammoth? 
Yeah, that's that's the woolly mammoth, you the know. Mammoth mascot. Oh, it's they got of, a mascot up yeah, there. Yeah, they got mascots like Disneyland. You know, and the kids all want to take pictures with them and stuff. So that's kind of cute. Um, my daughter, this we we had a lunch break, and my daughter had this. There was this big giant dog laying in the in the snow, and my daughter was like, "I got to get down on the ground and, and get down with that dog." So, I don't. know, I'm just showing you pictures because I mean, this is. But when I say this place has become religious for me, it's like this is what I. It has created so much. Um, pleasure and happiness you know i take my kids there they've just got massive smiles on their faces my son drove up i was really reluctant to have my 19 year old son drive up to mammoth by himself with his buddy but i said okay whatever just and he's trying man this dude you know who's not the most adventurous guy trying and then i got my daughter who's in the black right here and this kid's been on skis since she's a little hey, kid daughter that's Which Julia. One? That's oh, 13 Julia. year old Julia. And man, she is, she's a solid skier. She's really good. Look at you, dog. Multitasking. Yeah. See, I know I shouldn't be driving with the camera. And I Trust probably, yourself like this. I probably shouldn't be skiing holding on to the camera as well. But yeah, it's just, I'm telling you, man, when you get up there. Oh, here's my daughter. Watch this. You guys will love this one. This, have you seen this video on social media? Because I almost crashed into my daughter here. And she's so pissed at me. She wants me to get rid of this. Here she is, 13 years old. Been skiing with this kid since she's a little kid. She's doing awesome. There's her little girlfriend up in front of her. And I'm trying to show her, you know, I want to get the front and the back. And then we almost crash. Have you guys seen this? No. Oh, yeah. Wait till you see what happens here. We almost go head first, crash right into each other. I got a mammoth story to tell you. Okay. Very yeah. Okay, take a look at this. Watch this. Watch this. All of a sudden. Uh, oh! Yeah. So, <laughs> damn, so, bro, you almost took her out. I know. Dude, so, my first time, well, my only time in Mammoth was my first time ever snowboarding, ever. And because I don't know what I was doing, and my cousin is a very advanced snowboarder who took us, he's like, dude, let's just start at the intermediate. You're fine. Intermediate at Mammoth, as far as I remember, is like crazy. Like, it's steep. It, it's, it's, it's not like curvy or anything, but. I was I was struggling, dude, like because I was falling. I was falling. I was falling. Finally got the hang of it at the bottom, right to get to the bottom of the mountain. Don't know how to stop. No <laughs> idea how to stop. My big ass coming at you in a snowboard. I see a girl and I'm pinpointed on her. I'm like, oh, my Take God, her down. I'm going to take her down. Her. And I start yelling, watch out, watch out. <laughs> what? She like turns around as I turn around. She just see this big old brown guy coming at her. <laughs> and I just grab her, dude. And I'm like, I'm going to take the hit and I'm going to fall on my back. I scratched up my back because all my clothes came up and I'm just like, I'm so, as we're sliding down, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> she's like, what happened? I'm like, I don't know how to stop. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And she was just like <laughs> laughing at me because I, I literally took the whole brunt. My back was messed up and uh, she was cool with it, but it was, it was scary, dude, but you, it was so much fun. You have to be so careful on these mountains because you have a lot of people, you know, here we were and it was the holiday season. It's New Year's Eve. It's New Year's Day. There's a lot of people on the mountain. And um, here I'll show you a picture. This this was a picture of our last day, um, which was me. I had my son, his buddy, Connor, my daughter, Jaden or Julia. I don't know which one's which hope her mm -hmm. friend. And then some other dude who jumped on the chairlift with us. And um, there's so many people on the mountain. And so many people of different levels. Some people are really expert snowboarders and some are like Alex. They're kind of first timers out there. You know, some are like my 13 year old daughter. She's been skiing her whole life. She can make it down any, any lift or any hill. Um, and then there's others that are learning. So you got to be super careful out there, you know, but it's so much fun when you're just enjoying the mountain and the weather and the scenery, Alex, in fact, show some videos <laughs> because here's I, what I try and tell people is this. You can't, just think about the sport of skiing itself or the sport of snowboarding. When you're out and about on the mountains, dude, you're 8,000, 9,000 feet up into the clouds and the mountains and the snow and the rocks and the scenery and the Sierra Nevada mountain range. I mean, it is amazing, the scenery and being out in nature like that. And then 
I guess what really brings makes me so happy is, you know, at night, there's there's always something going on in the village of Mammoth. They had this silent disco. I, love silent, disco. I love silent discos. Love aren't silent, aren't disco. silent discos awesome? Yeah, awesome. They're the best thing they could have ever been invented. You know, like everybody's on red or everybody's on blue and you're trying to figure out who's singing what song and who's dancing to what. It's so gorgeous. Dude, the village there is incredible. And there's always something happening. The restaurants are fantastic. I'm telling you, the kids are having the best time of their lives. I just love it. Are there any other videos of like scenery and stuff? Because I'm telling you, man, I tried to take some scenery shots for you guys. What kind of clubs they got up there? What kind of nightclubs? Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Good ones. I know. We had a New Year's Eve party at Rachel's house, and it was, it was great. I was going up a ski lift here, and I was, uh, I was taking a look at some of these moguls, and I was thinking, that's not where I want to be skiing right now. You know, I love getting down. I love being safe. I enjoy the wind. Look, look at these videos. I mean, this, this is where you are. You are in the middle of nature, and they've created this world-class ski resort right here in California, man. It's just it's so incredible. But here's one thing I got to say. I'm, I've become one of these guys now who walks around with his girlfriend taking pictures or constantly taking selfies. You mean happy? <laughs> <laughs> Should I show this one? This is yeah, uh, very. Uh... This is a revealing. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, I don't think whoa, I'm going to show this one. I think you should yeah, show you that. Better not I'm not show, that. show that. No one. way. Why will you not show that? that no, no, no way. Well, I'm not going to no, show that one. No. Oh, really? No. no, That's, no. All right. Here's There's me. And, here's me in the GF. Yeah. Here we are. I mean, she. Th you. You say happy. I mean, yeah. Smiles. Look, look at the background. I mean, forget about the two human beings in the front. Look at the background. That's where you are when you are at Mammoth Mountain. That's, that's where you're at, man. I mean, that is, it is just so spectacular. All right, here's me in the GF again. I mean, this is what I'm saying. We yeah. walk around all day long. I'm taking pictures of her. I'm taking selfies of us. You know, there's Rachel. There we are. There we are. That's, that's, that's us right now. And then... At the end of it, you know, my daughter, she's she's looking at this giant pile of snow in the front yard. And she, all she wants to do is lay down and do snow angels. So, you know, these are San Diego kids who, for the most part, have 70 degree sunshine all the time. You know, that's the beauty of California. Yeah, and I, I tell people this in Chicago all the time. You got to do it. That's the beauty of California, that you can drive for three hours and be in, in four feet of snow. Yeah. Yeah, but I will say this. I was a big bear skier because it was convenient and it was easy. But now, um, I got to say, I will always, always be going to Mammoth. You're a Mammoth guy. Yeah, now I'm a Mammoth guy. You're a Mammoth guy. All right, let's let's call Lauren. Good. Mm -hmm. Hey, Lauren, can you hear me? I can. Hey, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? Doing great. You know, we spent the last 10 minutes. I've been telling Alex and John here that Mammoth has become this religious place for me. And it started like three years ago, or four years ago. My kids wanted to go because, you know, everybody in the school was going. And then, mm -hmm. and then the following year, I was able to meet Mark Brownlee and do a podcast with him. He was one of my very first solo podcasts. And now I can't even believe it, man. I've got this incredible girlfriend who owns a house in Mammoth. Okay. I didn't even know that. Like if, if she would have put that on the resume before I even met her, I would have been like, wow, amazing. And we oh just we have just had the best time. And I just wanted to get you on the phone and and talk about what's going on up at Mammoth Mountain, because you must know, you know, for, for someone like me, I say it's a religious place for me now. You must hear that all the time. I do. And honestly, I feel the same way. I grew up in San Diego. I spent a ton of time here as a kid. Like you said, same thing with yours, coming up here during all the school breaks. Um, and then just pulled the trigger about eight and a half years ago and was like, I'm going to see, I'm going to see what it's like living up there. And I, I honestly haven't looked back. It truly is a special place up here. And the vibe here is unlike any other mountain I've been to. There's something about that, like California, Southern California culture that really permeates throughout the resort. People are having a good time. They don't take skiing too seriously. Um, it, it's just a place where you can kind of come let loose um, and get some really good skiing and riding in, too. Yeah, you know, you say the Southern California vibe 
up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And now that you say it that way, it really resonates with me because like one of the things we wanted to do is we started over at Eagle Lodge and we wanted to get all the way over to what's the name of the place where they have like the grilled cheese sandwich shop that's on like the opposite end of the resort. What's the name of that place? Yes, it's the Melt House at Outpost. Oh my God, Outpost. We skied, we went up lifts and down and then up more and then down and up all to get over there to sit around in the afternoon, enjoy the sunshine, get Mm -hmm. a cold beer, get a grilled cheese sandwich. I was dipping it in my tomato soup. And the best part is, is I love meeting people from all over. And again, you say Southern California vibe. Everybody I'm meeting is San Diego, Orange County, LA. And it's so nice to, to meet people and understand, you know, why they're there and how they come. I'm just telling you, you just nailed it. Southern California vibe in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Definitely. That's funny you say that. I have a journalist visiting right now from the UK, and he's only here for a day, and it's a gorgeous bluebird day. He's like, where should I get lunch? I was like, head over to the backside of the mountain. You'll get the most scenic, kind of iconic mammoth views of the Minaret Range. You'll start at 11,000 plus feet. I was like, and then go to the outpost, grab a beer, have a grilled cheese. I was like, and you will meet a new crew out there just, just sitting around watching people come down the mountain. And I was telling the guys that what I really also love is that by the time the day is over, and I had one day where I just couldn't make it back and all the lifts closed on me, and you guys make it so easy. I was able to get on a shuttle. I was able to get into the village. And then when I got to the village, I just was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to go to a restaurant. I went to Gomez's. We started having margaritas before you knew it. The kids were there. Silent disco was happening. There seems to always be something going on to keep your family active and engaged while you're there. Definitely. And that's kind of a beauty of Mammoth. You know, we know that our guests from L.A., Orange County, San Diego, they want to do more than just ski. So we try to provide, whether it's um, opera experiences or activities off the hill, like tubing and snowmobiling and snowshoeing. Um, We have some really great new bars on the mountain. We completely redid Canyon Lodge um, and have a huge new bar called the Lincoln Bar over at Canyon. Um, Just really looking for, to kind of elevate people's experience here and not in a fancy luxury Aspen Vale kind of way, but in that kind of true California community, letting people have a good time um, type of way. So that's that's definitely true as well. So now here's what we're thinking. You ready? Yeah. Because as a a, a kid from San Diego, you know that once you get that in your blood, you know (laughs) what? That drive doesn't mean anything to me. I loved that drive. It didn't bother me one bit. I timed it perfectly. It looks like Game of Thrones when you're getting up towards (laughs) Bishop. It's awesome. And the the drive didn't bother me going or coming home. So now I'm trying to get Alex and John here to commit to me that we could come up and spend a week and actually live stream the podcast every day from the mountain. Although I will say Wi-Fi can be a thing to deal with up there, right? I mean, everybody's trying to use their cell phones at the same time. Yeah. Um, but, but I'm telling you, I, I just, once is no longer enough. You know, it, it's like yeah. any open weekend. I'm like, I got to get back up there. Yeah. I, I love that. And I've done the drive so many times. It's an easy drive, you know, six and a half hours from San Diego, about five hours from LA, um, very little mountain driving. People sometimes think it's like those high high passes in um, Colorado, but it's kind of a straight shot through the desert until you um, get to Bishop, and then you have those gorgeous views of the mountains. It, it really is an easy drive, and I have the best memories, most, I would say, 90% good memories of being in the car with my family as a kid coming up. So uh, my man John Browner here is a Chicago guy. Okay. He's, he's a basketball man. He is not a skier. Mm-mm. He is not a snowboarder. Not at all. He says, you know, you've got Sean White, and this is now going to become John Black. Mm-hmm. And then you've got <laughs> the Flying Tomato, and my man here is calling himself the Flying Sweet Potato. So w- <laughs> what do I do with a beginner? Do I, do I put him on skis? Do I put him on a snowboard? Do I put him in classes? He's a grown-ass man here, Lauren. Real grown. I think we start you on skis and put you in a private lesson in ski school. We have ski school at all of our base lodges. We'll pair you with an instructor who will get you shredding in in no time. We have great beginner terrain at all of our lodges. And honestly, as an adult, starting with skiing is probably a best bet. It feels a lot more natural for people. Um, But, 
you could do it. I'm also we'll really tall. Here. I'm also really tall. It, I mean, it is. It's definitely not a tall man sport, but um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have a we have a couple professional skiers here who are very tall, and they're kind of bucking the mold of saying that skiing and snowboarding is for short people. <laughs> Lauren, before you go, um, Mammoth Mountain is a place that develops pros and Olympians, and I mean, Sean White is very much affiliated with with Mount with Mammoth, right? I mean, it is a place that that you guys do groom, if you will, um, Olympians there, true? Definitely. You know, we've had a long-standing relationship with um, U.S. free ski and snowboard. Um, we do training for the world's best uh, halfpipe and slope-style skiers and snowboarders here every spring. Gold medalist Kelly Clark, gold medalist Chloe Kim, gold medalist Sean White. You know, these athletes have called Mammoth home for a long time. And it's just a special place because we have a huge terrain park program. We take, you know, terrain parks very seriously, whether you're a beginner. So we have the little terrain parks where you can learn kind of how to get on on snow and on features. And then we have our huge main park, which is for experts only, where any random day you're out riding the park, you can see kind of some of the best skiers and snowboarders in the world in that park. Um, So that kind of combination. And it's really nice to train here. It's not frigid, cold like Colorado. The sun is shining every day. You usually don't have to deal with crazy weather in the spring. People and athletes really enjoy training training here, and you, it kind of goes to show when you see how long our season is and how many athletes come through our parks. Yeah, that's not me. I'm more into the drinking part of it. i got to be honest with you. I mean, all of a sudden, <laughs> drinking beer and skiing in the day and having a grilled cheese and partying yep. at night and silent disco and great restaurants and lots of smiles with the kids – It is such a great place. I look forward to visiting with you again later in the winter. Thank you very, very much. Yes, look forward to seeing the whole crew hopefully back up here. You hear that? You hear that, John Browner? Also, a flying sweet potato to you, sir. Yeah, that's right. Flying sweet potato. I can't wait. (laughs) Thanks, Lauren. Appreciate you. Thanks, you guys. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great time, guys. I'm telling you. And I, I do think, I do think we should do it. I think it would be great to take the crew up there. Now, the only thing is, John Browner, you have been able to figure out how to broadcast stream live from a boat, Mm -hmm. but can you figure out how to do it from a mountain where we are extremely limited with Wi-Fi? That ain't number frozen water, man. I can figure that out. I got it. Just get me up there the day before, and I'll take care of it. You hear this, Grande? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. We're going to do it. Let's do it. We're going to do it. Let's do a week in Mammoth. You guys do the shows. I'll catch you after. I want to go up there and have some fun. No, we will. We will this absolutely. Guy, every time he he when when's the fun start? When's, when's the, the fun, fun start? start? <laughs> every you time. can't take me to a place like Mammoth and Yacht America and expect me to want to work. No, that's th- on there. there. No, no. This time, no. this time we will we will half work. We will half have a great time on the mountain, and we will half be partying and drinking and eating and having a great time. I need the club. That's all. You're looking for that club. Tell me where the club, where the bar at. Need that club. Yeah, last time I was a mammoth, I wasn't 21. Papa's 21 now. Let's have some fun. There you go. Make it happen.